hi, thanks for talking to me. I appreciate it. I, I saw sure. the film and I enjoyed it. Um, so you can just talk, start by talking about how you got the part. Like, how did you become involved in the project? Uh, I was approached by the producer, Sybil, um, who uh, we uh, were talking about a project that I potentially was going to direct. Um, and that didn't um, kind of fit for uh, myself or Sybil. We, we both thought that someone else would do a better job. And then just got chatting and had a really great lunch. And um, Sybil was saying, well, I'm actually doing this other movie. I feel like maybe it'd be great to work together. And that was, um, and that was warning. And she sent me the script and I watched the sizzle reel and, um, or the pitch document she sent me and kind of was blown away by the concept and the idea and the visuals. Then I met Agatha and, and, and uh, was asked to be a part of the film, which I was very grateful for. Um, you kind of just talked, I was going to tell you, ask you why you kind of talked about some of that, but was there anything specific to the character that you kind of connected with? Um, yeah, I, I think that I love characters that have this romanticism, this ideology of, of, of how they view life that is different than than, than a certain uh, character that may be in the scene interacting with whatever character I'm playing with, always against the grain. Um, yeah, I really, I really liked um, what his um, intentions and how he held onto a certain kind of integrity to how he saw life. I'm trying to be as very, um, I'm trying to be specific, but not give away. <laughs> too much so i apologize if I'm, okay, okay. I'm not fully answering that's okay um okay well i guess i guess the obvious question is would you want to live forever and why or why not i don't think i would want to live forever i, I think life is about well life is impermanent you know it's forever changing we have this moment and it's then lost and i think that's what's beautiful i think we sometimes can come into this very rigid mindset and um, yeah, I think when you have a rigid mindset, it's the cause of suffering because we are not uh, we are not embracing change, you know, or the evolution of change. Um, mm -hmm. And I love I love the cycle of life. Look at nature. We have all the seasons. We have, you know, yeah. I I I, I wouldn't. I, I don't think I would want to live forever. I think it's very egotistical here. Yeah. <laughs> sure. um, now, obviously you're being vague, so I'll be vague, but I'm ass are we to assume, because they really didn't show, but that they forced him to change his mind. Like there wasn't a discussion. I, I assume, or is that more supposed to be left up to <laughs> the audience? I was just kind of curious your take on that. What's the question exactly? You're asking if I um, chose to change you know, mind that, or? The, that the character, what, ends up happening to him i assume that was not his choice still even in the very end because it's possible there could be a conversation between him and his family but we never actually saw exactly what happened so i was just kind of curious if you could say anything about it's, that. It, it, it's it's a little bit like me asking you at the end of inception what do you feel <laughs> what do you think about the spinning dime all right fair enough it's all left, right it's left to your your interpretation all right. Um, can you talk about working with um, Annabelle, the girl, one who plays your girlfriend? Yeah, I, I've been friends with Annabelle for for quite a long time, and uh, I mean, she's a, I mean, incredible actress, and um, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I was very grateful to work with her. I, I um, kind of suggested to Sybil um, that she was my friend, and and would they ever be open to? having a part of the film and they said 100 percent. and so i i called annabelle and asked her if she would read the script and she read it and then went through the same process and she managed we managed to make the dates work and yeah working with her is is a, is a joy she's so talented <laughs> like like frustratingly talented like i'm there like learning lines trying to build character and she just has this ease about her and set that that is very commendable. Right. Now, from what I can tell from Googling you, the, the woman who plays your sister is your wife in real life. Is that correct? Yeah. 
Can, can you kind of talk, I mean, what was it like getting to work with her on the project? Well, she wasn't my wife when we made the-, the Oh, the, okay, I apologize, her, I didn't realize her, that. At the time she was, was, um, was my friend and didn't become my wife till last year actually oh okay um, but no we, we were friends and um yeah she she's also a, a very talented actress and uh um yeah i was also very happy to work with tony and and also my father played my father so it's, oh, wow. it's like a family friend endeavor <laughs> <laughs> that was an interesting dinner right <laughs> yeah, yeah it's kind of like yeah it was very interesting and and um I, I can't say too much because obviously I don't talk too much about my personal life, but uh, well, in, that, in that regard. But I feel very grateful that I got to work with not only family but friends and people that I love dearly. And, and making a movie is very, uh, very special because to put a film together, it's very hard, especially in the independent space. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it, it, this movie means a lot to me. What did you find the most challenging? Um, I think for me, the challenging is that it was just a segment that that it was there was no narrative that it's like a short narrative. And mm -hmm. so it's like being a part of a short film. Um, uh, but it was even though that was something that was interesting for me, it was also an element that was also very enjoyable, you know, because now I can be in a position where I'm talking as a fan about the film because I don't feel so um, uh, yeah, I, I just I, I look at the view and view the film from a creative point of view that I'm only in it a, a small part, but I mean, I say small part, but I mean, that segment of, of the film that threads right. through, you know, that I find very, very enjoyable just to then enjoy the film as, as a fan. And it's a great film, you know, it's a very thought provoking film, a film that has a like a lot of um, very relative truths, you know, especially towards what's happening in technology and AI and the way that we view technology and AI. And so, um, yeah, it was it was it was a great film for me to to be a part of and kind of my perception, uh, even though I had a very similar perception um, as my character and some of the characters in the film, um, I definitely came away from the film more mindful. Right now. As you're saying, you didn't get a whole lot to to actually put in it. But so, is there anywhere other than the script that, like, you were inspired by for the character? Maybe someone you thought of as you created him? Anything like that? Um, well, he has a little bit of a Romeo and Juliet element to him. Um, I think you'll understand what I'm saying with that. Yes. <laughs> but but um, yeah, I mean, it, there's there's a there's, it's a it's a beautiful love story, you know, um, and kind of fighting for what you believe in and keeping your integrity and um, kind of also then questioning the elements of what what life means to us and um, how do we value the people that come in and out of our lives you know and and this is kind of expanding on that and I know it's your own opinion but I did kind of want to ask you what you thought about it like what it meant to you and you've sort of talked about that already but can you expand on that a little bit just not necessarily the per se meaning behind it but just your meaning like what you got out of of watching it well i think that we are in a point in time where technology is its evolution is so drastically advanced that we are in a place where our communication has evolved into a kind of a distorted reality you know and i think that um you know, even to, I know that unfortunately we've gone through a very, very hard time in the last few years, but even talking like this and doing press junkets via Zoom, you know, the, the, I, 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 you know, I, I miss the authenticity of being in a room and, and talking and connecting. You know, I, I think there is a certain amount of connection here, but I also think that there's a connection that is much stronger when you're in the room with someone and can, you know, hold that, that space. Um, and I think, for me, being mindful about how we present our lives and uh, incorporate technology into our lives, you know, and not being um, overindulgent in that. And I think that it's still important to keep a sense of self. Right. Now, this question, I don't know if you know this, because this is probably more of a director question, but it was driving me crazy, so I'm going to ask you anyway. Okay. Do you know why they chose to use older televisions mixed with the new tech? I was just kind of curious, because I thought that was an interesting choice, and 
I kept thinking, what does it mean? What does it mean? I just was curious. You, you know what's interesting is that the aesthetic of the film and the choices that you're talking about, it brings a narrative of uh, like a subconscious conscious element of past and future because really technology has always kind of evolved in, in this weird space, you know, um, and that we are kind of full circling on that element. Um, but I'm not the director. I didn't make the... Okay. <laughs> and as far as the narrative, it's completely her um, her storyline. I'm, I'm just very happy and proud to be a part of it. But as a fan, I also have similar questions that I definitely, at some point, I'm going to write a long email and get some interesting answers. I shall. All right. So um, do you have any other projects coming up that you can talk a bit about? Uh, I'm just about to start a movie called The Chelsea Cowboy that my company, Dark Dreams Entertainment, is producing. And uh, it's set in the 70s about a guy called John Binden, uh, like a notorious English gangster slash actor. Um, and we have another film um, called The Lost Ones that's going, uh, that we're producing. And we've just got some really interesting, cool stuff that we're, as a company, very proud of. Okay, very cool. Um, the only other question I have is, can you describe your character in three words? That's always difficult, but I'll ask you anyway. Uh, what is Drake's album, new album? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm not the person to ask. I don't know why I thought of that, but certified, certified lover boy. Is that, is that, that's his, because that's the word. I'll yeah, say I Certified I, lover boy. I should have asked you what his theme song is. I guess that would have been the same answer, right? <laughs> All right, great. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. I appreciate you taking the time to speak to me. Okay, sure. Have a good day. Bye-bye.